our guest is a Nigerian creative photographer, painter, seasoned fine art artist, and the publisher of a magazine called Mania Magazine. His work in photography and visual art has earned him lots of international recognition abroad and locally, and with his high, uh, light-hearted and easygoing dominion, his unique style and mastery of aesthetics and creative lighting. Welcome with us, the veteran himself, Kelechi Amadi Obi Ooh. in the building. <laughs> Yo, yo. Good to have you. Good to have you. Same, yeah. Same. Yeah, you know, I've, I've I'm glad to heard be of you. I've seen you in the past. But I've seen you physically here for the first time. <laughs> it's such an honor to have you on the set. It's honor is mine. On set. Thank you. So, photography in Nigeria has evolved over the years, and you're one of the veterans. In fact, you're probably one of the pioneers of this industry to make it a proper industry. Um, how does it feel? 2022 now, there are lots of photographers out there who are doing great work and... Um, how, how would you, in a nutshell, um, talk about the industry photography? How has it grown in the last Well, it's, it's exploded, mm -hmm. really, I would say. Um, we got into the photography space, I mean, when we were shooting film. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and we've, we've sort of walked through that process, the evolution mm -hmm. from film to digital, and then from digital to the ubiquitous phone. Mm -hmm. You understand. But what has happened is all through those metamorphoses, there's been a multiplication of the need for imagery. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sort of become as new media and stuff is coming out, the more the need, you mm -hmm. know, for good photography. Mm -hmm. And with the digital, with the internet, with that space, um, social media, it's global. Mm -hmm. So then the quality just has to be the same as anywhere in the world. Yeah. You know, I do remember a time when we used to have this, oh, it's, this is the quality in Nigeria, and then that is the quality <laughs> abroad. But no. now the lines are very blurred. Oh, you know? wow. So what has happened is that, you know, the nature abhors a vacuum. You know, when there's demand for it, people will rise to the occasion. So... Um... I knew you before you went gray. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I was, I was looking at you. When I saw you out there, I just re remember a very um, adventurous part of my youth because I was modeling. And I used to model with Kesa Jabari. And then I used to model with Modella. And then we used to come to your studio. And it was, it was just like... You, you are special if you get to be photographed by Kilichi Amadi Ubi. Like, yeah. that is Even every model. Now. Yes, <laughs> every model wanted to be, you wanted to have your headshot, you wanted to have your picture <laughs> by Kilichi Amadi Ubi. And I, I, I've seen that evolution consistently over time. And we're living in a, in a season where everybody feels like it should be like this. Um, I should fall in love with something and I should just blow. And then I will start making the millions and I will remain number one. How has it been dealing with your people you trained, taking that space, people, your clients using them, life changing like that? Oh. How have you moved through that journey and still remain relevant? Oh, well, I mean, I do have a philosophy in life. I, do, I believe that the true reality is in the moment, you know? And then they say, oh, wake up and smell the roses. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's all about the process itself. You know, the, the process of creating, the process of living, the process of making things, for me, is an end in itself. Mm. That, that process then becomes my life, mm. you know? So what I absolutely enjoy is this being in a constant search for the new mm. and enjoying the process of being a student and the mm. learning. And once you're like that, you will constantly evolve. And photography itself is such a dynamic you know, sort of business. It is based on technology. It is changing. Mm. Right now, we even mm -hmm. have AI, yes. you know, creating <laughs> things. So, you know, if, if you are afraid of learning, then you, you stay in one place. Mm. And yes, you will always find the new talents. What mm. is happening now is so beautiful. Mm. Every day, I'm looking at all these younger ones, you know, putting up really, really creative work. And what can I say? You know, mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful. It's something that for me is at the core of what I set out that maybe we can achieve this. Mm. Maybe we can change the look and feel of the continent of Africa mm. and the way people see our, our, our people. And it's not by one person. Right. Mm. It has to be legion. Yeah. Mm. Okay, much better. All right, so um, when you've built such a global brand and it's very unique, 
So when you see a Kilicha Madiobi picture, you know, you can already tell that this was shot yeah. by Kilicha Madiobi. So how have you been able to maintain that consistency and excellence over mm. the past couple of years? Over, I mean, decades. your journey's been <laughs> long, decades, <Yeah>. not years. <laughs> you guys, it's been so yeah. long. How, yeah. So what's the drive to maintain that excellence and be Perfect. consistent? Oh, well, what can I say? It's all about setting standards for yourself. You know, so I like to set very high standards. I always tell some of the younger ones, the thing is, it's a comparison between you and you, mm. you know? But you have to say, okay, this is the best in the world at this. Does my work compare, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of technical proficiency or whatever? But at the end of the day, creativity, again, is so unique that you have to find your own voice. Mm -hmm. So then, then there's really no serious means of comparing your work. So at the point in your creativity, you will develop the courage to be yourself. And once you're yourself, then there's nobody that can be compared. Mm. You know, then your work becomes this kind of thing that you can say, this is unique. Mm. And once it's like that, and the world accepts it, then you're getting into that space. What's the future of photography, especially because there are lots of people that come into the industry, and when parents hear their child say, I want to become a photographer, then what is it? What that much, what that much money is there? He's, he's taking people's pictures. So people are still somewhat skeptical yes. about career. I know somebody who is a Harvard graduate. He came back home, and he told his mom, I'm done. Get my camera. <laughs> and now he has a studio. Yeah. And the mother keeps saying, I don't understand. This child, he went to Harvard, right? He went to Harvard, <laughs> you know, and he's taking pictures. Yes. So there are lots of people going. So what's the future of photography? How do we tell parents to encourage? Can we encourage children to go into this, um, into this, into this work? And what's the what's the what's the future looking like? Let's talk to parents today. What can I say? You know, the future is good. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing this. I'm taking care of my bills. Mm. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I wow. don't know how to put it. <laughs> you know. Um, but again, just like every other thing, nothing comes easy. The right. important thing you need to look at is, is the child enjoying the process? Yeah. You know, once you're enjoying the process, for me, I believe that success is a process. It's a series of habits, mm. you know? So if the child is enjoying the process, they will most likely, you know, succeed. Um, succeed. Or rather, they've succeeded on, uh, already. Mm. We're just waiting for the money to follow the success, mm. you know? And so once the child has that passion, don't push them in a different path support them. Mm. And if you're afraid that they may not survive, look around you. You would find that the industry has completely, you know, gone to a different place. People are paying premium, you know, mm -hmm. for their time and things. And the photography is so versatile that you can really get so many different streams of income, mm. you know, well from seen. it, okay. if you know what you're doing. Mm. Mm. So, um, everybody has a f camera. Mm. And our, our phone cameras do wonders right now. There yes. are things you can do with your phone cameras, tweaking the, the and there are a lot of apps. Yes. There are a lot of, tech has improved a lot of areas of our lives, especially within the photography, videography space. Yes. And the question is, there are some jobs that tech has, tech has taken out, yeah. and there are some tech will take out. Yeah. Is photography in any way one of those um, jobs that tech might take out. Well, you know, at any point... Let me just qualify that. Mm -hmm. So there used to be this, people, um, when they're doing news in the US, we see videographers carry the camera in helicopters to yes. do, and now what do we do? Drones. Drones. So that job is out, yes. totally. Yes. So obviously, some will go. No, absolutely. I mean, there is no doubt that technology will take some people's jobs out. I mean, like I told you, when I started photography, we were going to film. the dark room we to, to dark process room. our film. <laughs> you know, when the digital came in, you know, um, when the QSS machine came in mm. in those days, a lot of studios closed. Mm. They couldn't handle the fact that people have small cameras and they don't need to know how to process mm. film. Mm. You just go to the QSS machine and get their 15 Arab <laughs> copy done. Mm. Now, that took out a lot of photographs. When digital came, a lot of people also couldn't yeah. handle it. Yeah. Mm. You know? So at any point in time, when technology shifts, a lot of people, but one thing that technology will find very difficult to take away is the artistic mind. Mm. That's you. Is the artistic eye. Is the ability to create from millions and millions of experiences that you've had that makes you make the decision make, to point mm. your camera in a certain place, put your light in a certain way. That thing is 
difficult for technology to replace. And that is what makes you an artist. Mm. Interesting. I love it. How, does, how did your family... Let's, let's go with be personal now. How did your family accept this line of business? Because sometimes, and when you started, I'm sure it wasn't one of the most popular careers no. to, to they pursue. Have so much money. So did your family, did, were they always excited about it? Or they said, well, go and get courage. courage. <laughs> photographer, yeah, doing good to me. Well, I've always been a bit of a rebel. You know? <laughs> what can I say? I, I come, my father was a, a high court judge. My mother was oh, a wow. teacher. Yeah. And in my, in my family then, you know, it was only two professions that were truly recognized. It was, it was no, law yeah. and medicine. Everybody's you know? So I, I studied law, you yeah, know. Wow. So, yeah, so, I mean, that what brought me to Lagos was law school. Right. Oh. But, you know, I've, yeah, and I, I, have, I have not always been a photographer. I actually started as a painter. So that was even more difficult, you know. I mean, so once I finished law school, I decided to be, start painting. Really? Yeah, so I was stubborn like that. What kind of painting? Like painter <laughs> Watercolor, painter yes. Watercolors. Watercolors. And so you yeah. never practiced law at all? Well, maybe during my youth call, you know, I went yeah. to court a couple of times. <laughs> oh, but wow. I had made the decision I was going to be an artist in, from my year three ah, in fantastic. school. But I just, you know, I wanted to make sure I get called. And your me. wife met you as a lawyer or as a, um, as a painter? No, I was a painter. I, was, I never really practiced law. Yeah, right yeah. from... Law school, uh, from law school, I... I so we need to marry a painter. Oh, yeah. My wife is actually an artist. You know, she ah. studied art. Oh, yes. Yeah. So. So. Very easy. Perfect <laughs> blend. You know, so, yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, now she's an interior designer, but, yeah. you know, um, it's, it's, it's a perfect blend. We met at an art exhibition, yeah. so... Um, ah, nice. So, yeah. Okay, so, sorry, we, lo we love these kind of stories. Yeah. Was it like love at first sight or it took a lot of prepping? <laughs> you're already blushing. Well, I mean, the truth is, yeah, I mean, the, the first time I saw her, it was very, I was like, interesting, you know? Mm. And then we became friends, you know? Yeah. We became friends over the years, support each other, talk about art and things like that. And then, you know, after a while, it just occurred to me that this, this is my wife. Oh, nice. We still have the veteran photographer, Kalechi Amadio, be with us. I know you have something coming up. Could you tell us about that a bit? Oh, well, I'm having an exhibition. Ah, um, um, on In the Nigeria? 20, yes, in Nigeria, in Lagos, on the 29th of October. Oh, you know, nice. Um, it's, it's called Amazing Nigeria. Oh, I love that. You know? Oh, um, nice. It's something I've always wanted to do. And, you know, it's about... I sort of traveled around Nigeria... And photographed the most amazing landscapes, Aww, yeah. you know, and sort of selected the best images, 30 of them. That's what we're going to show, nice. you know. And, you know, it's, it's a journey I, I embarked on with a brand, the Macallan. You okay. know, they say, oh, they're interested in, you know, craftsmanship, mastery. What can we do together? I say, let's go around the country and, and photograph. Aww. Let's see if we can tell a positive story. About, about this you. country, oh, and it. you know, then I discovered Nigeria anew. Oh. You know, going through some really amazing places. Where, where, where you did know. you discover that was that was really? That was, that really well, I went it. into Obunike Caves, which is pitch yeah. We dark. have somebody who's been there. Obunike Caves. Yeah. Now, now staff you know, of TV. Bats everywhere. So yeah. I had to oh. light everything. When the pictures came out, it became quite abstract. Of course, we went to the mountains of Obudu. Oh. You know, but when I went to Abokim Falls, you know, it's got like six or seven falls in one, you know, which is amazing. And then went up north to Mambila Plateau. I've always wanted mm. to go there, you know, and... I've heard of all these places. I'm looking forward to seeing your images. I thought we'll be seeing yeah. some pictures here. Yeah. How, how, how long will it take you to It's happening at um, Eco Pan-African Centre, Eco, Eco, Eco Bank. Okay. Eco, Eco Bank. Bank. Eco okay. Bank. That's on Ozumbamba. The way it's a new okay. building. Oh, really, okay. really nice okay. space. Ah, there. Nice. So, is it free for everybody to come? Yes, and observe? from the 29th, it's open for the public. We have a collector's preview on the 27th. Okay. You know, but I mean, from the 29th um, till the 20, till the 6th. Of, of, November. of November. But they must so register the or they just show up? No, 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 it's, it's sure. free. Show up? Yeah, you can show up. Okay. It's free for people to come Would you be there to sign, sign over to you? Yes, I will. I will, what time I will make start? sure. Um, it will start from 10 o'clock in the morning, I okay. think, and by 5 o'clock every okay. day. So let me just quickly take you back into photography because this is an area of photography that we don't know can be monetized. You, you mentioned that there are different areas of photography and we tend to just talk about, think that it's only portraits and events. But yes. what are the other key areas that other photographers who are watching right now are, can look into? There are so many. It's unbelievable. In fact, you know, the exhibition I'm having now is, is another section of photography yeah. where you are making a physical product. I mean, so you've got prints as limited editions. Mm. So... Um, 
So you can have a full career just doing that, you know, mm -hmm. shooting and exhibiting. So it's the photographer as an artist expressing himself. How do you make money from exhibitions? I always wonder, like, okay, so you yes. put all the lovely pictures, I go out there, do I have to buy it or I just look at it, admire and go home? <laughs> yeah, there are two ways. Okay. You know, there are people who have an exhibition where people pay to go and look, okay. you know? Then the other one is you have an exhibition where people buy okay. the works, you know, the, the exhibition might be where people <clears throat> buy. So if, if people are going to buy the works, then you make money from right. that, mm. you know. But then there's this issue of duplication. So if I want to buy mm. a picture from you now, yes. now and I give it to one of my brother that's just going to duplicate, I'm going to sell it on the streets of, of Lagos yeah. and make money. How do you avoid that? Or how do I, how do I pay loyalty? Well, that's, to a, that's a very interesting question. I mean, it's very valid. You know, if I was discussing with one of my colleagues the other day, I mean, the photography as limited edition print industry is heavily um, dependent on trust. Mm. So when I say I'm going to have some of my works are going to be limited edition of three, and then, so you have limited edition of three images of that particular size, okay, and then you have the artist proof. So when you sell three of that, you will never sell any hey, other one. Good. You retire that image. Mm. And no matter how much people offer you, they won't get it. Oh, wow. So that is what makes sure that the work that those other people have collected has value. Mm. So it's, it's, it's based so, and you know, you, you're gonna have a certificate of authenticity, mm. the work will be signed mm. and numbered, mm. you know? So those are the things that bring, I mean, it's been happening for, you know, many years, many years in different parts of the world. Yeah. So we need to sort of bring that, yeah. you know, to Nigeria so that people can have these objects, you know, each one has its own Specific value. Can you imagine. Well, also, Simon, I'm just thinking NFT have to, and have, all those other space. Yes. Like, there's so much exactly. happening. We have to wrap up, sir. But mm. thank you. Yes. I mean, thank you so for good. Coming. I think we need to bring you back more because we need to dissect that industry. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. if there's anybody, there are so many opportunities that people don't know. Oh, and yeah. people, so we need to bring you back to help us get some kind of a workshop we need to mm -hmm. do where we're educating Nigerians oh, on this yeah. industry. Fantastic. Thank Absolutely. you so much, sir.